All right. It's July. Uh, Coach Yanni and I, we're going to be talking today to all you leaders about burnout. And it is a very, very uh, much a hot topic right now because we've been so busy post pandemic. We've been so busy. And so how do we manage it? How do we prevent it? How do we deal with it? How do we even know it's there? How do we know we're in it? So Coach Yanni is going to take it from here. Let us have it. Uh, Eric, thank you, everybody. Thank you. So good to see you guys again. Uh, you know, it, it, burnout's a really interesting topic. And those, Eric, those were great questions. Uh, it's one of the specialties within leadership coaching uh, that we focus on here at Vickery. And um, uh, Eric is in a war zone right now. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I, I, let's jump in because it, it, burnout is mission critical it it it's interesting it's almost like a cancer it will destroy your hard work from within so let's start with the question how do you even know you're in it i believe uh, really just like a cancer there's four stages of burnout i want to focus on stage one what is what is the what are the early signs right so the first one and some of these you're going to be like that's not a stage of burnout i'm telling you that it is you're easily distracted at work. Okay. Now, if you're watching this YouTube video while you should be working, <laughs> that I, I know that's funny. I'm telling you, I know that's funny, but, but when you're at work physically, but mentally half the time you're somewhere, you're thinking about the next vacation. These are, these are signs. This is your soul telling you, Hey, the, we're on overload here right? Um, so the knot in your stomach uh, every Sunday night, right? I, I, and, and to prove that point, that knot wasn't there when you first got out of dental school. There was, you, you looked at the end of the week and you were like, wow, I, no, let's keep going. Now you look at the end of the weekend and I mean, you're just shy of I mean, you're stage one, so you're not this bad, but stage three or four, you're curled in the fetal position, you know, weeping. I will make this point. Um, I, I worked with a guy who was in stage four burnout and uh, he was the head of his company, his organization. And his wife walked in one day, it was a really important day, very busy day. And he's in bed and she goes, what are you, what are you doing? You have to get down to the office. He goes, I'm not going. She goes, you, you have to go. You're, you're the head. You're the leader. He goes, I'm not going. I'm done. I don't want to talk to those people. I don't want to see those people. And we laugh because it, it is funny. And, and literally, I'm not, I'm not joking you. She literally ripped the sheets off the bed, took them out of the room, turned the shower on and said, get up. Can, can a human really get there? A hundred percent. That's what stage four looks like. Yeah. Stage one now looks like a, a knot in your stomach. Or, or can't sleep at night on Sunday night thinking about what's going on on Monday so much you can't even sleep Sunday night. It's the only night you can't sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Eric, that was incredible. All right. You want to keep going? Yeah. So does vacation, and a, uh, does vacation feel more like a, a prison release program? Okay. Do you, I mean, do you get on that first or second day of vacation and you're, you're like the lady from the sound of music, you're dancing in the Hills because you've just right. And, and, and here's what I mean. Do you have the not coming back from vacation? When you come back from vacation, do you feel like you're, you're going into a, another sentencing? How about this ripping into coworkers or staff for seemingly minute things, right? What, what, what do you mean? The floss isn't, uh, uh ordered. You didn't order the, how could you not? We have a month and a half. I don't care. Whoa, whoa. Right. And then this is, this is probably the one that's the most hotly debated. And this is the first one. This is, this is almost always the initial sign is not, hear me out, not catching yourself, spending your free time, like in the shower, dreaming about what you want to accomplish at work. Hmm. That right there is the 
almost every time the absolute first sign. How, and I'm going to prove it to you. When you were just launching, I mean, think about it. It's all you can think about. When, when, your, when your office was getting designed, you're, you're thinking about where you want the chairs, how you want the uh, waiting area to look. You're thinking about who you want to hire. And then you get in and there were, there's been parts in your business where you're like, oh, I, we could expand this. We could do this. We could buy, right? When, you, when it's been weeks, months, since you've done that in your free time, that's the very first sign of stage one burnout. Because as an entrepreneur, you're wired to be passionate. And when that passion starts to fade, these are the early signs of burnout. Okay. I love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I'm taking notes. Uh, you're reminding me of launchers and managers and people who see it through system. Like you have this, it's like a half a bell curve. Like these people just, they love launching. And then all of a sudden they launch the business, the business is doing its thing. And they go, I can't do this anymore. I gotta go launch something else. <laughs> they yes. get so burnt out on the every, the daily grind. Okay, Eric. I, and for those of you watching this, I did not, we did not pre-plan this, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Eric just gave you one of the very first keys of overcoming burnout. Whatever stage you're in, whatever signs you're in, right? Maybe you're in the fetal position right now being like, I'm not going in. Okay, fine. The very first sign is you need to identify what you enjoy and what kills that joy. Because the fact of the matter is there are people that are launchers. Okay. So what does a launcher do? I'll tell you what a launcher does. A launcher hires a fantastic maintainer who can overview and, and help with the maintaining and take over the maintaining. And then the launcher should look back and go, okay, I, where do I launch from here? And I want you to think about the Hubble telescope, right? Before the Hubble telescope, and, and you might be thinking, what does this have to do with anything? Just, just hear me out, right? A, hundred, a couple hundred years ago, we were, we were looking through a telescope from the highest tower. Then we decided, hey, if we go up to the highest mountain, right? And so we put our sophisticated telescopes on these high mountains. And somebody got this bright idea. Wait a minute. I can take better pictures if I get out of Earth's atmosphere and... I, and, and I have nothing in my way. What we've been doing with the t these telescopes is reducing resistance. What you do, now think about it. The pictures that you get from, from the, the, in the muck, in the mire, they're different pictures than when you're up higher. <laughs> and, so <the> la <laughs> and so the launching pad what a it. day. What a day. I'm telling you, construction <laughs> in the house. Uh, we're on summer vacation here, man. Just dogs showing up, <laughs> everything. Thank you for continuing to go. I should have hid my video there. I knew that was going to happen. Sorry, guys. No, no, I love it. No, but <laughs> Real life. <laughs> Eric, that's just it, right? It's, it's, this is what we're talking about. How do you handle real life? You have to be honest with who you are and it, what you just did. Hey, everybody, audience, this is the situation that I'm in. This is what I'm telling everybody to do. Understand the situation, understand who you are and lower resistance. If you're a launcher, get somebody in to maintain and now launch again. Well, what do I launch again? I don't know. Buy another practice, open another practice. Understand though, that this time you're not launching from sea level, you're launching from just above Earth's atmosphere. You're going to have greater clarity. You're going to have greater potency. Your launch, it, and you have so much more experience, right? So d for some of you, you need to stop thinking that I've arrived because as an entrepreneur, that's not what you want, right? Some of you are in launch and you've been in perpetual launch and you're like, I can't get out of launch. I just want to maintain. Okay, so find somebody who can help you launch. By the way, how do you, as a launcher, you hire a maintainer, how do you know what to do with them? As a maintainer, you're in launch for years and years. 
how do you, how do you, this is why you have coaches. This is what we do. We're here to help you as a launcher understand and facilitate a maintainer that you've hired. We're here as a maintainer to help you launch. This is what we're trying to do, right? And so some of you, you're in such burnout because you're not operating in the way that you should. Let's take it one step further. Are you an extrovert or an introvert? Look, if you're an introvert, and, and then we can even dive into DISC, right? Are you dominant? Let's go, let's go. Are you social? Let's not. Okay. Any of those things, all of those things are, are, are going to come into play. Understand who you are and understand the people around you. Look, the fact of the matter is you might be burnt out because you're unwilling to admit you made some poor hiring choices. Can, can we sit with that for a moment? <laughs> right? You don't know what is going on because you haven't taken time to stop. And, and, and this is one of the things we do in coaching. We force you to stop and go, okay, why? Why do you feel this way? Well, my people, they're never doing this. They're never doing that. Well, let's explore who you, okay, you hired a bunch of the wrong people. You're a dominant driver. You want to go, go, go. And you hired a bunch of uh, analysts who want to sit there and delay every single flipping decision you make. That's not a good combination. You should hire one or two analysts. The person at front should be an extrovert who's excited to see everybody, right? But if you don't have a healthy mix, if you hired wrong because you weren't trained, okay, what do you do from that? It's causing your burnout. Eric, thoughts on this before I keep driving? No, keep going. I, I'm seeing overreaction with staff. That's the biggest thing I'm seeing right now. I'm getting a lot of, hey, we've got conflict going on here. And I'm having to dig through that. And it's obviously, I'm realizing right now, it's a sign up. People are burning out. And, and Eric, let me ask you something. What, what about it? that specific interaction or conversation is causing you to go, yep, that it's people burning out. Well, just hearing you talk, I'm, I'm in realization mode right now myself, you know, wow, it was, it was a little deal, but it was made into a big deal. And you can, now I step back and look at it and go, yeah, there's lots of things happening in that situation that are probably applying pressure. And that pressure is create combusting into a different reaction than it normally would. Okay. You Again, guys, we're not, we did not plan this. There's no outline. As a leader. Well, well obviously just, we planned for everybody to walk through the door. So obviously we planned this. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good point. <laughs> That's the proof this wasn't planned. And, and we didn't plan the shirt color either. I'm telling you, it's just <laughs> happening today. Um, as a leader, it's not just your burnout that you have to be considerate of, that you have to think through. Because that person who's manning the front desk their burnout is affecting your business, right? So what happens when you're sitting and it's not your burnout, you're excited. And all of a sudden you turn to somebody and go, Hey, did you order that new shipment of dental floss? And they go, why are you always telling me about the dent? And you're like, Oh my gosh. Uh, right. They're, te they're telling you too much pressure. I'm, I'm burning out. Right. They're, they're telling you, uh, by the way, a, another sign of burnout um, that's a you would think is early stage, but is a little more late stage is tardiness. Tardiness where it wasn't before, mm. right? So, at, at, what I'm saying as a leader, when you've had somebody who has just been faithful, and all of a sudden you notice these small behavioral changes, man, this, this person's they're a little more grumpy. They're they're not showing up on time. If you start to discipline them, <laughs> now keep in mind, these have, you see behavioral change away from what has been historically good. If you start to move forward with discipline, you will actually drive burnout more. You need to look at them and go, hey, you know what? When was the last time you took a couple of days off? Oh, it's been eight months. You know, you need to take a couple of days off. 
Or you may even look at them and say, hey, you know what? I want you to take the rest of the day off. We can manage without you. Now, why? Because you have hired an asset. Don't look at your dental chair as an asset and look at your people as something different. The, especially that front office person, that front office person, it, a lot of times is the face and the personality and the customer service. You, you will win or lose on that person. You will win or lose on your hygienists because these are the people, they don't see you as much as these people. They, it, I can tell you right now, my daughter wants to see certain hygienists and not others. Are the other ones bad? Nope. But, but some just treat her a little bit better. And so those are the hygienists that she wants. If they're, and, and listen to me, our family would choose a different dentist if my daughter couldn't find a hygienist she likes, that's how important these people are. If you're seeing the signs of burnout and you start to discipline them, you will lose them. If you're seeing the signs of burnout and you begin to lead them, you will endure them to you and build loyalty and build trust. And then they will defend you and conflict will come down. All right. I'm, That's good. That's good. Let Love me, it. let, let me talk about stage four. So I want to make sure I understand. So early signs, st stage one are just distraction and tardiness, all these things. Did we stage two? Did you give it a label, official label of stage two? No, no, no. Uh, okay. All right. Good, 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 good. I like that. I'm taking so, notes. I'm trying to make sure I'm following along. <laughs> so, so stage two the signs are the same as stage one, but they're now they're pronounced, right? Instead of occasionally you're ripping into a coworker, it's happening weekly. Um, the, the pit in your stomach, and you, you mentioned it, right? Maybe you have occasional sleepiness or sleeplessness. It, it, stage one are early signs. They're sporadic. Stage two, same signs. They're now consistent. That this is the life that, that you're living, right? Stage three is now you're seeing decline either in your life, if it's you personally, or in your business. You're, you're starting to see quality decline. Hmm. And stage four is root bitterness, right? Think, think the old guy, get off my lawn, right? You're, that is, that is stage four. Stage four is rarely curable. It's not to say that it isn't, but once bitterness creeps in and, and by the way, we've all heard the stories of the people who sold everything and went and lived in, in a hut on the side of a lake, Right. Those are the people who lived in stage four for so long that, that, or, or right. They're just, they're done. So if you're looking around and you're seeing the quality of your practice reduce now, that doesn't mean revenue. That doesn't even mean customer base. It just means quality, right? The, the lobby isn't getting picked up the way it used to the, 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 the chairs and the areas around it. They seem a little more disheveled, right? The chaos, the conflict starts to elevate. Okay, that's, that's the beginning of stage three, right? Why do I say this? Because most people, most people start looking at stage three and going, well, what's happening? And I'm telling you, I'm giving you the tools. We are giving you the tools right now. Look for stage two and and stage one in you look for stage two and stage one in your people, because just like cancer, if you catch it, then the cure rate is quick and easy. And, and but we can cure stage three. It's, it's just not as painless. Got it. Got it. I interrupted you and you were going to four though. You were, <laughs> you know, I'm hanging so, on the edge here. I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. So four is generally it is generally incurable it, 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 because bitterness has come in. As a leader, if you're in stage four and you are, you're bitter at your people, you're bitter at your patients, you're bitter at, at, at just the business that you're in, 
you you need time. The very first diag or um, prescription is time. You need to get away for a week or two. You need to get away for a week or two. In my world, I would say you need to spend some time with your wife, spend some time with God, praying, getting clarity, getting understanding. And, and then the answer is if you come back with a renewed, okay, things have to change, but I'm, I'm ready to climb that hill. It, it's, it's really a, a, a binary in or out. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you're having, you're at a, at a crossroads. Yeah. Totally it is the crossroads it. discussion. I'll, if I'll, you're in, let, let me just yeah, say this. Ahead, if, you're, if you're in stage three, well, let me back up. If you decide, okay, I've, I've, I'm at the crossroads and I'm deciding in, you automatically move. You've taken the time. You decide to go back in. You automatically move to the back end of stage three. You're at the very back of stage three. If you're at stage one, you have the ability to make those changes on your own. Stage two and stage three, that's where coaches come in. Right? And, and that's why I say, look, stage four, make your decision. If you decide I want to climb the mountain, then understand right at that moment, you're back into the last stages of stage. You've got to reach out, especially stage three. Very few people can navigate the rising conflict that comes with stage three, the decrease in quality that comes with stage three. This is what we do at Vickery Coaching. This is literally what we do. You just didn't know that you were calling it burnout. Okay. I, I just wanted to get that message out. Love it. That's so good. No, I'm, I'm actually realizing some things too. You know, um, Abby will ask me, you know, she'll, I'll, I'll work a 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. No lunch. I mean, that'll be my coaching day. Out every hour, there's a meeting, and she'll, you know, I'll walk out at six, and she'll be like, "How are you doing? Great, I'm doing awesome. Love it. I mean, I think if you're passionate about what you do and you're you're seeing results and and you're excited about it and there, there's reward in it for you, it's easier to do. When when things are stressful burnout starts showing up in more tangible ways. So what I would say for dental offices listening is to take this advice and go, okay, let me do a self evaluation. What are some signs and symptoms that I'm seeing? Reach out and just message us and just have a conversation about it and see what's going on. And then we can get into to solutions like balancing a support network, uh, slow the pace down, uh, being passionate about what you do, finding time to relax, maybe having a different, you know, having breaks, things like that. I think some people don't have good boundaries. This guy, <laughs> you know, delegating, right? Having other coaches, you know, delegation, uh, being able to, to say, okay, this is my limits. And uh, sometimes we get excited about growth at the cost of the stress. And we got to be careful there. So, any final advice, Yanni? So, I, I just yes, and and, and I want to say, I, I I spoke with a leader a few months ago, and this I don't this is burned in my memory, and and as we were talking, he said, you know, I wish you would have called six months ago. And what he basically told me is, I got to stage four. I, I didn't take some time off. I just threw my hands up and I left it all in a blaze of glory. And he literally said to me, man, if we had met and connected six months prior, I, I might still be in the mix. Don't wait till then. Yes, it takes some humility right? It takes some Vulner honest, vulnerability, yeah, some that's vulnerability, the only, the only way to do it. Yeah. But, but, but I'm telling you, your, your future, I I've met the people at the end of this game. It's not pretty. We, Eric and I, Vickery coaching, we have been helping for years. We know how to do this. 
So good. I've got good notes. <laughs> uh, just message us, email us, Eric, your coach at charter.net. We'll get you connected with Yanni and get some coaching going if you're feeling this burnout stuff. Abby, my wife, is doing uh, performance coaching on the other end, and it, we're calling it it's survival care. That's what it's called because we've gone through an explosion of busyness. We came back from a, a two month, three month lull, and the dam broke of get caught up, whether it's sales or appointments, whatever it is. And I think we're two years into a from drinking from a fire hydrant. And we need to, need to figure out how to balance this and, and redirect things. So thank you guys so much for uh, joining us. And we'll do this chat again next month, every month like we do. All right, thanks, Yanni.